hello everybody welcome to zbrush beginner course and in this video i'll be telling you how you can begin sculpting in zbrush really quickly i'll be telling you about some ui and basic function how to set the hotkeys how to set the ui and the most important thing the fundamentals of sculpting by the end of this video series i'll be explaining you how i sculpted this t-rex head and poly painted it in zbrush it is completely done in zbrush even the colors so let's begin with the series so when you will open zbrush the first time you will see this screen this is basically a light box and it contains all the default projects and brushes and alphas and all those things provided by pixelogic itself you don't have to worry about it to close it you just have to click it here and to open it you have to just click it here again so we will close it at the moment now to begin sculpting you need to add a primitive because if you click it now you will see these 2d strokes this this is not why we are here so press ctrl n to clear the canvas and to add the primitive to even begin sculpting follow these steps click here simple brush and add any primitive you want to add for example i will add this sphere 3d and just click it and drag it here okay but we won't be able to sculpt it now you have to make it editable by pressing it here edit or pressing t from your keyboard you will make it editable but now to f even now to start sculpting you have to make polymesh 3d because without polymesh 3d it will pop a message that to even begin sculpting you have to make this primitive a polymesh 3d so we will make it a polymesh 3d by clicking it here and now we can sculpt it by default you will see a red red, red wax material and this is a matcap gray so i highly recommend it you switch it to switch the uh, materials you have to click it here the startup materials and when you click it you will see all sorts of materials here and I have downloaded some custom ones but uh, by default you have you will be having the red wax green which is not a good material and I highly recommend it that you change it by clicking it here uh, and selecting any material you want I highly recommend you switch to matte cape gray which I have chosen here at the moment because it you can see the details and forms more better than compared to a default one which is red wax so switch this material from red wax to matte gap gray by clicking it here so to begin sculpting uh, you just have to click it and it will add geometry by using this standard brush and if you press and hold alt key on your keyboard you will subtract it so any brush you would be using you would be uh, using this brush having two modes either it's z add or z sub by default standard brush has z add selected which means if you don't press anything and just click on it it will add if you change the z add to z sub it will subtract it by not holding alt but i don't mess up the, with these uh, default settings and i will select z add by default in order to change the cursor size you have to press s on your keyboard and you could change the draw size on and off just press the x and click on the draw size and click it uh, left and right to make the cursor uh, bigger and smaller and this is how you can uh, make the cursor big and small another another thing you could do is press f on your keyboard and turn the draw size from here but i use s it's shortcut and it's easy to use now which brushes to use there are tons of brushes if you click on this palette you can assess the brush palette and if you press b on your keyboard you can assess the brush palette and there are tons of hundreds of brushes available in zbrush but most of the time i use three to four brushes yes and the most brush i use is move brush the brushes i use most of the time are my top four or five brushes the primary brush i use which are which is move brush clay brush and standard brush and the secondary brushes i use dam standard brush and edge polish or trim dynamic don't worry i'll be using all these brushes 
uh, when I will sculpt that T-Rex head. Now in order to sculpt it, uh, we are sculpting in a digital app. So we don't, we have some options, so we don't have to worry about the symmetry. Okay, and for that to turn on the symmetry, ZBrush has a symmetry option. If you press X on your keyboard, you will turn this symmetry on and to disable it, press X again and you will disable it. The most of the time you would be using symmetry to make your work more easy. For example, symmetry is if you use for example B and press M and I would choose move brush. If you use a move brush on this side, it will automatically be applied to this side. So this is called symmetry. By pressing X on the keyboard, you can disable it and enable it or you could go to transform and here you would see tons of options in symmetry palette, activate symmetry, press X to disable it and press X to enable it and by default it is selected in the X axis and you can um, switch it to Y axis or Z axis or all three at once. But to make this tutorial simpler, we would be using with a default X axis symmetry. So in order to sculpt it, I use clay brush all the time which is B, C, and clay brush and what I do is I press and hold alt and I just make this bony landmark for example if I want to create the eyes or the nose I mark this uh, bony landmark then I switch to move brush B M and move is selected and I just click it and move this uh, primitive to just match the shape for example i want to sculpt a skull so in order to i'm not using any reference so in order to sculpt the skull i would have to use the move brush the most in order to match the shape we are sculpting in a 3d application not 2d application so we would have to see the mesh from all direction okay so the skull looks like this from the back and it is most of the time this and this now as you can see this i will move i'm using just move brush and i'm just trying to make a skull okay and the the more reference you see the more good you get so i'm just pressing and holding alt key to carve it and uh, i'm just uh, adding the clay and trying to make a skull shape just in order to explain you now i can see these artifacts okay in order to smooth it we have a smooth brush in order to clear this artifact press and hold shift on your keyboard and you can smooth this okay just click gently and you can smooth it okay you make a mess using a clay brush okay and you smooth it okay this is how you sculpt you make a mess you add a clay smooth it you add clay smooth it and use the uh, move brush all the time the other useful things rather than smooth brush is masking for example uh, con press and con press and uh, hold control key on your keyboard and just you will see a marks uh, cursor okay press and hold control on your keyboard and will you some you will see marks and click and drag and you will see this mask okay you can click and drag and just select the area and this marks area will be selected so for example you would want to use the move brush on this upper side but this side wouldn't be affected because of the marks okay and now in order to invert it you can of course invert it click just click and tap um, just hold control and click and tap on the canvas to just uh, invert it click and uh, hold click and hold control and click on the canvas to tap it 
to tap it tap it okay and uh, you can tap it the marks this way now there are certain things you can change the strokes of every brush even the marks for example if i press and control if i press and hold control key you would see a free hand stroke here this is the stroke type you click it and you would see bunch of uh, stroke methods and for example i choose lasso and you can now when you were dragging with the marks brush now you can just drag and you can add a lasso okay and you can drag and it will mask it okay the symmetry is selected and if i disable the symmetry now how to clear the mask click and hold control key and just drag outside the canvas outside the mesh and it will clear the marks i will switch it to again the dots now to mask it just mask it invert it click hold control hold and click control on the canvas and just tap it to invert the mask and uh, to clear it press and con press and hold control and just click and drag to clear the mask other than that there is another useful tip uh, there, there is another useful thing which is uh, you would be needing when I will sculpt that T-Rex head is uh, for example the polygroup selecting the polygroup now to mask it press and hold control to mask it okay I have told you I have told you that but to make a polygroup you can press control and shift and hold and you will see this green bar it is a visible poly group okay you can uh, hold the space bar and you can just drag it now again to review it press and hold control and shift both on your keyboard and just click and drag on the canvas if you press only control and hold it you will mask it and if you press and control uh, control and shift together you will make a visible polygroup okay you can select it and uh, you can just keep this green arrow which will you want to the mesh to be available and just uh, leave it drop it and you will see that selected part which was in the green vicinity is showing this mesh okay now in order to invert this poly selection or uh, visibility polygroups what we call it uh, you would it will you would be it is a similar method uh, like masking but uh, control press and control uh, press the both control and shift and hold it and just tap it on your canvas to uh, visible it or control D uh, press and press control and shift key and hold it and just click and drag to invert it okay this sounds this will sound a bit of a complicated at the moment but the more you will use the more you will get the grasp of things okay so in order to fully visible the mesh you have to press ctrl and shift together again and hold it and just tap it to make the old mesh available ctrl shift to make this green arrow and uh, the part uh, of your mesh which is in the green vicinity which will be visible okay and click and drag again with control and shift and you can invert it and to make it completely visible just uh, pressing and holding control and shift key tap it to completely visible now i will make add the smooth brush and just tap it okay now in order to i'm just using clay brush and trying to make the skull shape okay and uh, I will be using BC clay brush BC I will choose the clay brush and just for the nose I will gently again and again tap it and then I will press BS and select the standard brush again and by holding the alt i will just make this crevice okay now to use the brushes and uh, to use the 
other features it is a convenient to make some shortcuts okay and you can make those shortcuts by customizing your ui and how to do that i will explain you now in order to customize the ui uh, if you go to the preference you would see the config option click it here and just click on enable customize now i will be customizing some ui for my better use and to explain the tutorial properly i will be adding the brushes which i use the most here so i don't have to go over pressing b and selecting those brushes again and again so in order to uh, move the brushes over here first you would have to go to preference click config uh, click on enable customize and if you click on this arrow you can close and open the docs here and same here okay now if you go click on the brush palette you would see this icon click and hold and just drag it over here and it will drag it will dock the brush palette here now it will show you the history of which brushes you have used and i will use this history to put the icons over here so in order to move the brushes icon or any icon over the ui you have to press ctrl and alt and hold it and click on it and just click and drag and you will place this clay brush over here okay press ctrl and alt and hold it and i will use the standard brush okay uh, the standard brush is here okay and press and hold ctrl and alt and move the standard brush over here another brush which i will be using the most of the time would be the move brush which is here press and hold ctrl and alt and click and drag and over here this is how you customize the whole ui and as you have seen on my previous clip where i was having the t-rex head the ui was completely bombarded with these modifications so for the to make this tutorial more easy for me i'm adding these three brushes icon here now the mesh is quite a low poly if you click it here you would see the active point this whole skull the mesh is over 8000 points only now in zebra there are certain ways to remesh a mesh and i will show you all almost all for example the dynamesh is mostly used okay what does the dynamesh do for example and uh, for example i have to add another primitive to the skull okay if you press the sub tool over here and if I, what if i want to add the sphere or cylinder this uh, primitive and just click it and you would see a different types of primitive here okay for example click it on the cylinder by pressing the append and the other sub tool will appear this is how you can add multiple sub tools and uh, by pressing the append okay now in order to switch the sub tools you just have to click it over them and you will select them you have to click it here to select the skull you have to click on the cylinder to select the uh, cylinder and in the canvas press and hold alt and just tap click and you can switch between tough sub tools here press and hold alt and tap and switch the sub tools here now in order to place the cylinder i will press w on my keyboard which will bring up the gizmo now the gizmo is move scale and rotate and if you hover your mouse you can see the you can press r e and w to bring up the gizmo all these key just use the same functions which which brings the gizmo the reason why these options are here because it it is for the legacy transpose tool in before zbrush 2019 i think there was no gizmo on it and there was a transpose transpose tool so still 
uh, has a transpose tool if you press y on your keyboard you will see this transpose tool but uh, for to make the uh, user friendly gizmo they have added this gizmo option but if you press any of this the function of this gizmo is the same so press w e or r the function of this gizmo would be the same now you see this gray arrow you can click it and just move it completely free form okay or if you want to move it on a certain or rotate it on a certain angle you can rotate it here or if you want to rotate it on a certain angle you can rotate y-axis the blue is for z-axis and the red is for x-axis okay now i want to place this cylinder over this uh, skull okay and uh, i want to press the scale the yellow icon is how you scale the object primitive okay now this square you can see this square r for scaling and if you want to scale in this axis you can scale that and if you want to scale on this axis you can that and you see there there these are the icons you can reset the gizmo by click it it here and it would reset the orientation of the gizmo but it will match the uh, rotation or orientation of the mesh so press ctrl z and tap click and hold alt key and then press key so it will only reset the orientation of the gizmo but not the mesh itself and after resetting the orientation you can uh, paste it uh, paste it here and you can rotate it and you can just press and hold alt on your keyboard and you can move the gizmo freely if you let go all the halt and move it you can move the sub tool so this is a tip for you and you will scale i will scale this here and try to make a uh, for example a uh, neck of this skull bear with me uh, this is unrealistic I will unrealistic neck and uh, I will press the X on my keyboard and use the symmetry the symmetry is off okay because I have changed the local scale or local position of the mesh okay now what I was trying to say is uh, for example B and press I and this inflate brush I would use it to inflate this primitive okay and just smooth it so these are the brush which would could come handy which could come in handy <clears throat> okay so i want to merge these two tools okay i want to merge these two tools in order to scuff this skull for example bear with me tap and hold tap and using alt <clears throat> press and hold alt and just tap it to switch between these sub tools or you can just select and the sub tools from here okay now in order to merge this you would see in sub tool palette there is a merge option click it and you would see the all kind of merge uh, options okay now what i mostly use is you can click on merge visible which will uh, which will merge all the visible sub tools here uh, you can see these eye icons are visible options you can click it to hide and visible them on and off okay hide them or not okay i will click on merge visible and uh, it will merge all the sub tool and uh, here it will add it okay but this is how you can switch between the merge sub tools and not merge sub tools okay but this option i do not use i mostly use merge down which uh, how to run it is this select the upper part of the sub tool and you will see the second part you want to merge it okay so here is the option merge down which will use this selected mesh and merge the bottom part so select this upper part and click on merge down and it will ask that it's undoable operation click it and it will merge this primitive okay now both the different sub tools are merged into one but still if you click here you can see the topology of this two primitive this is this icon is polyframe okay click it to hide the polyframe 
topology click it and you can see the topology here now these are different topology we want to for example merge this and remesh it and now there is a there are certain options in zbrush to remesh these sub tools the most common is dynamesh and zremesh so what is dynamesh dynamesh is something it remeshes your complete model and it merges all the part and gives it the complete new topology for example if you go to geometry and here you would see the option of dynamesh and by default it is off and the resolution is 128 and there would be other options okay now see this carefully here to turn click it to turn the poly frame on and you would see two different sub tools which is merge via a merge down which we clicked earlier but the mesh itself is not merged now we have to make it one and gives it the complete different topology so we could manipulate or sculpt it better because in this sub tool the uh, mesh topology is stretching and in this sub tool the mesh topology is okay now what does dynamesh does that if you click on geometry and just click dynamesh while having the resolution of 128 let's see what happens click it and you see that it remeshed completely and gave it a complete different topology and merged it as you can see it merged two parts together now if you smooth it if you smooth it you could sculpt on it now the benefit of this dynamesh is if you go outside the polyframe press shift f and just smooth it out now you would smooth this skull completely and the topology which was stretching is not stretching anymore and with the dynamesh option you have the uh, unlimited you have unlimited amount of freedom the image uh, the imagination is your limit for example you want to for example i want to stretch the ears out of this skull so what we would do is uh, we would use move brush by clicking it here and we would just stretch it as you can see just stretch it and uh, give it a vampire like ears okay i don't know what vampire's ears would look like and just use move brush bear with me just use move brush and uh, just stretch it here or just move brush smooth it out now if you turn the polyframe on after using the move brush the topology is again stretched now to read animations press and hold control and just click and drag and it redynamesh it okay now in order to redynamesh again you have to make it a single stroke whatever brush you are using for example if you click and drag again it won't do anything but if you use a clay brush or the move brush and click and hold control again and it redynamesh it okay first it was not going to redynamesh it so, so dynamashing is something is an algorithmic code uh, which you have the amount of unlimited topology or vertices for example if i want to stretch this neck here the topology is again stretch click control and drag and it redynamesh it and if you use b i an inflate brush for example if i were to make it a torso i would then again use move brush and uh, just make it a torso like a thing i know this curve looks like a complete abomination but uh, i'm not using any reference anymore and uh, we would be properly sculpting in the next series where i would be making the uh, t-rex head okay so the thing is this is called the dynamesh okay now i i am using hotkeys i will make a different uh, audio about how to customize the ui properly and how to make hotkeys i told you how to uh, 
customize the UI but I will make a proper different video about it also so it would be easier for me to explain as well as easier for you to use the because after setting the hotkeys which is highly I highly recommend it and after setting our own UI the navigation of ZBrush becomes quite easy because all these default buttons I don't remember all of them I have my whole UI set up so for example I want to stretch the wings the chicken wings of it I will just use this move brush and uh, I will make a wing shape size okay then uh, again move brush and just bear with me I'm making a chicken out of it now chicken has some legs okay now bear with me this is completely abomination now click and drag control and it redynamized it and just press smooth and it will smooth now you can change the resolution of it okay you can change the resolution if 1 to 8 is too high for you uh, minimize it to 64 which I usually sculpt during a blockout and then make a single stroke to tell the zbrush that the mesh has been changed and redynamish again now the topology is half the amount of 128 resolution if you want to drop it more from 32 again uh, make some changes and uh, click and drag press and click and press control and click and drag and see this it is half the amount of 64 which were we were using before and it is now uh, complete you can see the topology now on 128 this square were too small and were too hard to manage now if you use smooth brush you would easily be smoothing move brush okay i am using smooth brush by pressing the space bar on the key so this is how dynamesh can help in your concept sculpting and uh, you can just make a concept out of anything just imagination is your limit in this imagination is your limit in this and uh, now i told you there were two methods to remesh in zebra well there are several ways like decimation and acceptor acceptor but the most two important people uses are dynamesh which i am trying to explain here and the second is uh, z remesh z remesh is another option to remesh your meshes so that you could add the subdivision levels on it and z remesh uh, with subdivision levels is so much important that when you have finalized your design you would always be using subdivisions so your mesh could not get much heavy your pc won't much get heavy when even if you're sculpting a multi 80 million poly skirt for example if i were to change this resolution from 32 from 32 to 256 for example and redynamize it okay now the total amount of the mesh is 805k okay it is it's in 8 80 000 something okay now we will smooth it now if you press shift f which is polyframe you would see the our mesh is too dense well in this case 800 is not a dense mesh in zbrush but there would come a stage that your whole scrub would be a total 10 to 12 million polys or even 20 million polys and even i have seen some industry standard models which are over 80 million polys so having a 80 million poly in dynamesh is not a good practice because dynamesh often tend to get slower whenever your active point amount hits in millions so your pc won't be able to handle much dynamesh resolution even if you have a 64 gb 128 gb of course it will handle but it is not a good practice because the higher the amount of points you have the high harder to control it on the primary basis for example if i were to use the move brush i it, it is harder for me to manage it now because it has 800 000 k polys but if it has 
if it were a 20000 or 30000 i would able to i would have been able to manipulate this years more easily so for that we have the option of z remesh now what is z remesh z remesh is a auto retopology tool yes people auto retopology tool but uh, it does not use an animation okay for the animation manual retopology is always required unless you are using a non movable object like stones or crates or even i heard the lion king movie i was watching a zebra summit where uh, they have invited the zebra team invited the people who created the lions of the new lion king movie and there was a monkey model i don't remember his name uh pumba or something no pumba was the pig uh the monkey the teeth of this monkey was z remesh it was not retopologized now imagine the monkey was in the movie so non movable object often people use z remesher if you go to geometry and go to z remesher uh, you would see the z remesher option now it has the target polygons count uh target polygons count is always 5 is always in 1000 for example it is 5000 okay 5 is 5000 1 is 1000 so for example this uh, 800k if you click on z remesh it if uh, uh, your target polygons count is 5 click on z remesh it now it will run the command now your target poly count is 11000 compared to if you undo it control z compared to 800000 so people what people does is uh, they work in subdivision levels and i myself work in subdivision level for example if you control shift z to redo what we did we z remesh it having five polygon Uh, having the five resolution in z remesh now it has 11000 now even if you were to give it this uh, topology if you press shift f the topology is quite good it has squares all around it it has loops over the ears it has loops over the eye sockets but it is not still a uh, animatable animatable model or animatable retopology okay so in order to increase the resolution we will press control d on our keyboard and give it a subdivision level of 2 if you go to the geometry now this mesh has subdivision level 2 because we press control d if you see the point the 11000 is multiplied by 4 if you were to press control d again this 44k will be multiplied by 4 again which is 179k and control press control d again it will multiply by 4 again which was for example 179 multiplied by 4 again which is 7 117 thousand polygon so it is the same as dynamesh polygon but it is easier to handle for example now we can switch between this subdivision levels as we see fit okay now we have given this model four subdivision levels and we can switch between them and sculpt on it for example i want to sculpt the ear sockets in subdivision level 4 so we turn off the polyframe and i will use the clay brush and uh, just hold alt and just try to sculpt the eye socket okay the eye socket i will try to sculpt the eye socket okay now i will use the standard brush to carve here and uh, now i want to move this ear but uh, if i use the move brush i wouldn't have much control over it but i can press i can go to sub division level 1 and then move it now it has the lowest sub division level if you turn the polyframe on it has the big quads okay the more you switch to sub division level these are the these are those sub division levels which were which we have given it by pressing control d so for example i switch back to subdivision level 1 and i try to use the move brush to make this ear more dynamic and press shift and try to give it 
a vampire like airs and uh, let's uh, give it let me turn the polyframe on okay and uh, the wings and this is i am using move brush on the subdivision level 4 now see that if i switch back to subdivision level 4 which is the maximum at the moment what i have sculpted in subdivision level 4 is there at the same position but having this design change because we did we did change the design on subdivision level 1 so as you can see subdivision level is that much important you switch to higher subdivision level and you just sculpt it using the clay brush using the clay brush for example here or here here or here or and here here and here 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 and uh, use uh, standard brush to for the teeth and uh, use standard brush T and press clay brush and for example I am sculpting it here and press smooth it I for the eye socket I again switch to subdivision level 4 and I want to change this eye level and make it more angry now I will move this eye socket and make it more for example the more skull like which is like this I switch to subdivision level 2 and again use the move brush to make it more skull like and again if I switch to maximum subdivision level which is 4 you would see that what I have sculpted in subdivision level 4 is same in the subdivision level 1 so what I do is I use the move brush the most in subdivision level 1 and if I want to add the secondary forms I switch to higher subdivision level now there is a shortcut of switching between this uh, subdivision level which is if you want to give a new subdivision level you press ctrl d once and you would give it the complete new subdivision level but to switch between lower and high you press shift d to go down the subdivision level press and hold shift d shift d shift d shift d go lowest subdivision level and just press d this time don't press ctrl just press d to just uh, switch between the higher subdivision level so you can see shift d to go to lower subdivision level press just d just d don't no don't press shift to go to higher subdivision level and in order to give a new subdivision level press ctrl d and give it a complete new subdivision level but i can give you the warning the more you go high subdivision level the more your pc would get slow but this is amazing the subdivision work differently in zbrush it is more smooth if you were to use this amount of uh, resolution or active point in dynamesh your mesh would lag a lot so that's it these are the few fundamentals you have to be careful during sculpting and uh, in the next video I will be telling you how to set hotkeys for your ZBrush and how to uh, properly make the UI more beneficial for your use before because when I would be using when I would be uh, sculpting the T-Rex I would be using all these fundamentals at once I will of course divide this T-Rex into several parts for in order for the beginner to get the, get the grasp of things and uh, I would be using Dynamesh to block out I will be using multiple primitive to block out the shape then I would, I would Dynamesh it then later I would Z-Mesh it and give it several subdivision levels and uh, for that I would be using my own UI and I would be using my own hotkeys so to set the how to set the hotkeys and how to set the UI properly is an important video for me to teach and for you as well so bear with me i'll be releasing this video how to set the hotkeys and how to set the ui the next and after that we will be blocking out this t-rex and from there we would be sculpting this t-rex complete 
in zbrush and paint it with poly paint and i will be telling you how to make the color brighten up uh, how to make it appealing and uh, let's see it would be fun to create this t-rex so i hope you like this video and if you haven't subscribed to my channel and share it and uh, send it to your friends or whoever you want to learn zbrush tutorials and zbrush software i know there are certain big tutorials for zbrush and uh, which could be better than me of course they are better than me but uh, if you want to sculpt this t-rex with me uh, bear with me and watch my other videos which will come in future and share this channel share this video as much as you can lots of love take care goodbye and see you later